Hey guys, I'm just I'm coming at you a little a little early, and I uh, oh, excuse me, I'm super excited for you to hear the show. So let's rock and roll. It's smartless. Smart. I did sweat, then I showered. Um, you sweat and then you're showered. So your hair I is sweat. mix of sweat, of sweat and no, wet. no, no, no. I uh, all showered all the sweat out. You I have uh, just shampooed hair that you're enjoying. Can I okay. now tell Will my next story or I, no? I want to get into your next story, but hang on a second, Jason. <laughs> um, did you? God, so many questions. Did you? Do you shampoo every day? I don't. Actually, I just lied to you. I did not shampoo today. Wow. Will, yeah, you sweat. Will, that's all sweat. I will not shampoo but once a week because, uh, you know, uh, as uh, most uh, most smart, well-groomed listeners will attest to, you uh, you will get uh, fluffy flyaway hair if you shampoo every day. Um, so, what? Uh, you gotta. You, you gotta keep our, a little. You think most of our most listeners will agree? No, no, most of them get it. But most then the opposite it. is oily, gross. Right, and that that gives you a handsome clumping. Okay, it's the name of my new autobiography. New Handsome new clumping. autobiography. Sean, do you Handsome sham- Clumping. <laughs> Not to be confused with ha- Handsome uh, Humping, uh, yeah. Sean's uh, three-part. Yeah, three-part series. Three, only three parts. Uh, yeah. Did you, Sean, did you, how how often do you champ? I champ every other day. Really? Every other and day. And you condition too? Oh, wait, I can answer that. Never, ever. Oh. Never. How come you don't use any hair product? Me? Yes, you. Uh, with the fly away, uncontrollable, <laughs> 1983 feathered. Match my personality. Just fly away. And why don't you put like a little bit of uh, even no, moose? When, when even I moose see you would guys, work, the old moose. No, when I see you guys on Sunday, a lot of times I'll I'll throw some some Product. poopy stuff in there. I don't, I don't see it. You need more. Why didn't you try Jen stuff that Jason did the commercial for? I did. Lola V. You're talking about Lola I did. V? Lola v. That, that commercial where you had all that food stuff in your mouth that you did Amanda <sighs> shot. It was not intended to be a commercial. Unlike Sean's, uh, okay. Sean tried to come over the top with his and he succeeded. Um, well, no, have you enjoyed that yet, Will? No. Did he do one for her too? Did you not see Sean's shower masterpiece? No. Oh, for oh Jen's my God. products? Yeah. And Scotty shot it and cut it together. And in it's, two seconds. It's probably online somewhere. No, right I don't now. think it don't, Sean, don't pull it up. Please don't pull it up. Why you not? You probably have a respectable guest that is <sighs> doubting or questioning their decision <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Why don't you just air it on the TV behind you? <laughs> you know, so that, because you've already seen it. Wait, and it where just, is it? Who knows, you know? I mean, I guess we'll find it one day. Sean. Shoot, I'm looking you, for it. I Obviously. All right, so um, Sean, what have you done with your break, listener? We we did an earlier uh, record, and now we're doing a later s- record, and it's been it's been a it's lunch a for day. A lunch I window ate- here in Los Angeles. No, don't tell. We'll tell you what you ate. I ate three donuts. Did you really? And a glass of milk, and that's what I had for lunch. I didn't eat anything specialty else. donuts or just piece, whatever the fuck happens to be on the plate. Yum yums from Yum Yums. Hello? Don't hello? Hey, don't say <laughs> don't say from yum yums as if we're supposed to know that. Yeah, yum yums. You're talking like about the spot up the street on the corner of Vine and Melrose where did score die bet. How do you bags? know that? How do you know that? Oh, uh-huh. Wow. I went in my pajamas. I was still in my pajamas and slippers. Oh. I walked right in there. Sean, why 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 do you eat donuts? Especially for so, lunch. For lunch. So good. So good. I was I was really hungry because I didn't have a, a big breakfast. And so I was like, you know, when you crave carbs. But you did have breakfast. No, I had like a cup of tea and like a muffin. Okay, so uh, just keeping score so you today. Had a muffin and three donuts. <laughs> Does your colon ever jump up through your esophagus, out your mouth, and just square up, look you in the eye, and say, "What is your fucking problem? What are you doing to me?" No, it climbs up, comes out of my mouth, looks me in the eye, and says, "Thank you." <laughs> Do you just roll into a chin chin now, and, and you go down, you go down table level with your mouth at the end of the table, and they just <laughs> shovel food into it? <laughs> You must be busy this time of year with all the Santa work you're doing, right? <laughs> How many callbacks did you have for the Grove uh, this year? That's, By the way, we can we can say because it's on the air, obviously already that you know the Sean playing Santa in the Murderville uh, holiday special was oh. tremendous. Oh, that's right. You yeah. don't super quiet for that. 
<laughs> Sean was so happy because he he was like, I don't have to memorize I any have lines. Any lines. <laughs> I can just sit there. It's oh, just it's so great. dead. It was yeah. uh, really funny, actually. I am hearing some folks uh, are enjoying that uh, that trailer, that that teaser, Will. Well, we it got was... a new trailer. Well, the show's, you know, it's already uh, as you know, it's already out. Yes, now with the airing of this this podcast. Right. But I tell you what, I tell you what, it's going to be timeless, just like uh, just like our guest today. Yeah. Speaking of your guest, I have something caught in my teeth, and I have floss with me, and I'm wondering if this they is won't a guest oh, they, that they, I have they, to. So go ahead and no. floss. Well, also, go like, ahead and floss because can I floss during the intro? Because also, when like, you I see, because they're going to give you shit for it. They will. Go ahead. Sean, yeah, go ahead, Sean. What were you saying? No, I was going to say, I have to, I have to tell you my, my nurse. Ne You've been talking about thing. the next story across two mm. episodes. It I know, better but be we're... good. Go. Okay, Sean, no, go no, quickly to the long. neck. Let's go. And I'm, I'm going to floss during it. No, go no, ahead. it's too long. I, I'll tell it. Well, maybe our guest time. wants to hear it, you know. Okay. Uh, because this person likes stories. They like telling stories. Okay. Um, Ew, Jason. They're, 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 I, I'm going to let you listen to the floss. No, but the camera's on your crotch. I love that we're not watching and they were just listening. God, this is Mally. this is like a nightmare. <laughs> this is just what I do when I floss. <laughs> that is so disgusting. Our guest is somebody. Uh, this Gyrating, is what, an, what an intro. Our guest is somebody who is not your run on the mill. This is somebody who does a lot of different things. Somebody that we all know. Some of us better than others. We've been friends with for a long time. This person is gets to do all sorts of different stuff. They're not just stuck in an office. Although there was a time. When he was stuck in an office oh, for many years on TV. Like I can't camera. say too much because Krasinski. you know who it's, it's gonna be because it's Krasinski. It's <laughs> oh. Yes! Yay! Yes! Oh, and finally. You're fucking, and you're finally. in the bedroom. Oh, you're in your own it. bedroom. This is my own. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> check out Frank. That's gone. John, what? Uh, oh, let's get, guys, let's get into it here. Whose fault is this? By the way, when we Who's, had... I'm just happy to be here Will? before the bicentennial. You know what I mean? Just before the 200th guest. You know? It's outrageous that Emily was here before you, Will. Well, oh, she, they were supposed man. to be back-to-back -back days, and it got it got moved a few times because of schedule of of everybody, of a bunch of you, because John one time and you and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it was supposed to be... So literally when Emily was on, and, you're, and we were like, we got to get John on, I'm just like, oh, just keep a straight face, because he was supposed to be on... The next day. Oh, what well, happened? Well, I was I was holding the boom for, her, so I heard the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So he was there the entire time. Were you really there when she, we were interviewing? Yeah, I was just. And he had a bounce. And he had a bounce <laughs> card too. He Hollywooded a bounce card. Wow. He was just Hollywooding. Booms in. Oh, Booms in. God. Hollywood myself. Oh, John. So Hollywood. All right. Listener, Hi, I apologize up top, listener, for you. Oh, You're going to have to God, listen to us just do a bunch of catching up now. It's going to be a lot of memory lane. A lot All of memory right. lane. All right. So uh, well, you are talking to us from a beautifully appointed uh, room. Children's room. Um, children's room. Beautifully wallpapered, listener, yeah. I'll have you know. It's, is that a children's room or is it a guest room? It's a child's room. Which child? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I yeah. was uh, taking a walk and just ducked into the first house I could find. Wow. And, and they were all set up for the podcast. Good for them yeah. that they had Amazing. the microphone and everything. <laughs> now, uh, John, how many kids now? Six? Two kids. Seven. Two just kids. Still the two. Two. Yep, the two. Oh, sorry. Yeah. With I mean, in total, not just with Emily. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant it was just with Emily. Uh, oh, okay. Six. <laughs> yeah, it's six. Yeah. Good yeah, for you. <laughs> Wait, Johnny, so tell us, uh, how old are the girls now? Eight and six. Eight and six. God. Eight how are six. you, by the way? I'm great, Sean. How you doing? I'm good. It's good to see you. It's so nice to see you. Jason, when you hear when you hear him talk about his two daughters, eight and six, are you like you look back fondly on not remembering your daughters when they were that age? <laughs> Do I have daughters? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Jay, I think I met your daughters when they were around eight and six. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, they're now uh sixteen and eleven. Will no, they 11. got it. They they were older. They were older. They were I mean younger. They were younger. When you were they, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, so you're in, you're in, you're you're back east. You live, you live east. Yeah. No, right now I am down under. I'm I'm talking to you from the future. I'm in Australia because oh, Emily's wow. shooting in Australia. Oh, That's sure, so, Fall Guy, Fall that. Guy. Wow. Yeah, oh, Fall Guy. Already. So if you guys want to know how the how yesterday went, it went great. So you're really you're in for oh, how were the hot costs done. yesterday? Did they go over <laughs> under what the <laughs> that guy Leach, right? Leech. He's uh, that guy knows how to direct a movie. Man, Bullet Train. He sure does, I right? Love Dave that. Leach. I love Dave Leach. He's a great guy. That's I love amazing. Bullet That's Train. That was real yeah. fun. Real yeah. good. Fun. Wait, are you there? Are you there involved in the same movie or just support? No, I keep going every day, but they keep saying no, not today. Thanks anyway, though. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. 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 thank you. Feeling. You yeah. just keep getting in background line for wardrobe. 
Um, yeah, just like on the waterfront <laughs> style, just at the gate, you know, just waiting. But did you, you just finished the movie though, right? Did you just finish I did, I just wrapped this movie uh, that, I, that I wrote and directed yeah. called If, <gasps> with uh, Ryan Reynolds and a Familiar. unbelievable actress named Kaylee Fleming, who is the, really the lead of the movie. She's incredible. Wow. That's no more incredible actress than Ryan Reynolds, though. So. He's good times. He was he speaking is. highly of all you guys. I love him. I've listened to every yeah. single one of your shows. Just No, that's not true. I have. No. Every single one. You know why? Because it's it feels like we're all hanging out again. That's what it feels well, like. Yeah, so I was texting with John, and he was, I was texting with John last night, uh, my last night, his um, two weeks ago, or two weeks in the future, I don't know. <laughs> fortnight. I forget how it works, but he, um, yeah, it was at least a fortnight in the future. Um and uh, he says to me, mate, he says, um, uh, yep. I'm really excited to do the, the po- yeah, because he really gets right in there. Uh, he says, I, I, I really, I'm looking forward to it because it's going to feel like hanging out again. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's been a fucking minute yeah. since yeah, we. Well, you're on yeah, fire. He's been busy crushing it as a director. Yes. I know. Um, oh. Congratulations on that, Johnny. Thank I you mean, so much, my guys. God. You and I, you and I have had some conversations since. I've been absolutely stunned by all your stuff. Uh, Jay, nice the Ozark you. was so great. Thank tell you. us, tell us, thank you. Tell, tell us what what is what is if is if in the same genre as um, as Quiet, Quiet Place? Place. It's not. I uh, I took a whole left turn there. And uh, is it uh, comedic? It's not. It's. Uh, I mean, it is. It is comedic. It's basically. Uh, it's my movie that I wrote for my kids. So it's about imaginary friends and the power of. Uh, oh, I love that. These adorable things aren't just adorable. They're uh, time capsules for all our hopes, dreams, and ambitions. So. Oh, I like. What that. if we could tap back into that? What if Ooh, we could tap that. back into it? Oh, uh, I smell yeah. tears. <laughs> I smell. I, there's a, probably a nice moment in there. Ryan can get you to cry. So can you. Oh yeah. boy, Ryan can do it real mm-hmm. well. Well, well. one of the things I love about Kraz, and I always have. Take it down, make it. Is that he's an emotional guy, he wears his heart on his sleeve. I don't know if I know anybody more emotional, who's so open about it. And it's a real superpower. Yeah, he's got his 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 Kleenex ready. And he will, and he has like, I can't tell you how many times over the years, Kraz has like grabbed my arm or my shoulder and been like, can you fucking believe this dinner we had, or whatever it is, and then he'll be, and he'll be well. <laughs> it enough. makes me sound like a psychopath. This no, it it's like. I no, need help. That's not at all. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> I love it because it's so. It's because you get so passionate about stuff, and you really, and and it, it goes to everything. You're, you're passionate about the people you love. You're passionate about your wife, your kids, your work, all of it. You don't do anything. Oh. There are zero half measure. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen you do anything in a half measure, including playing a video game. Oh my God! Do you remember that? Oh, oh do you guys not play Call of Duty anymore with your no. headsets? And no. oh, we before we got into Call of Duty, we headed over to Tweeter or HMV or something, and bought three systems, three cheap yeah. TVs, and <laughs> set them up in the same room, like Minority Report. Me and Kraz and, and Thoreau, and oh, we wait, did like at a the hotel th- at the hotel. We did a three day weekend in LA playing Halo. these video Bender. games. You went on a bender. Usually, was, yeah, usually there's crystal meth involved in something yeah. like that. No. <laughs> Just Do you remember? It was pop? so weird that at one point, you remember uh, Janine was staying there, Garofalo, and she came Janine over and Garofalo. she was making she was making bead, like she was making bracelets, and she was there, and we weren't even talking. She's like, eventually she's like, well, I'm going to leave. You guys aren't even talking because <laughs> we were all like, no, go get the we thing. Were, yeah, we were in a hotel. Yeah. She, we went down to dinner, Will, and she told us she was there, and we said we had no recollection she was there. <laughs> <laughs> we said that we didn't know she was in, and then she told us she was making bracelets with beads. But Johnny, no, Sean, so I you're down. Ask- go ahead, Sean. No, no, yeah, you go. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to talk about uh, what, what, what's going on down there in Australia. Tell, tell me, what's your average day now that, d- down there? Uh, as, as sort of a planned dad, you're, you're oh, bringing yeah. the girls to the set to coordinate with lunchtime? or uh, Well, the girls are in school here. We, we always okay. throw the girls in school immediately. How long are you there wherever for? Wherever we set up. At, we're... Uh, I'm here for another eight weeks, and then I'm editing a little bit, but then I go back to New York to edit. But the girls will stay here, I think, for 10 weeks, and then Emily's here for 12 more weeks. Wow. wow that's yeah. a long time. Wow. Yeah, I've never been here, by the way. Have you? Will, yeah. you've been here. Drew Form just told me that you guys flew together. Yeah. We, I come, I've, I've been there twice with Drew. And, yeah. and not only that, I don't look around, but I actually, uh, I'm like Mr. Australia. I just did it uh, w- with Rose Byrne. I just did a big campaign for Tourism Australia. So I'm yeah. kind of like what? represent. Yes. Uh, yes, I've seen it now. Is it out <laughs> yet? Is that crazy? It's, it's awesome. 
Yeah. Boy, what? So, <laughs> where, that's what, incredible. How many pages down on the list do you think they were? I mean, why would they go? What? what <laughs> oh my God. What about Will you know Arnett? What screams just Will screams. Arnett. Oh fuck, we gotta get Will Arnett to sell Australia to the world. When I think of the Outback, you know what's funny about I mean, that? I get you know, Rose Byrne at least is Australian. Go ahead, Kraz. Yeah, you know what's well, funny about that? Do you too? remember when uh, we were at Margarita Mix? Mm -hmm. I've only had one voice campaign in my life because they heard what I had and they said thanks. It's anyway. a voiceover studio here in town. Yeah. It was for insurance. I, I thank you. Yeah, clicker call. Anyway, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a but I was in the booth. I was in the booth doing the script, and in walks Will, and he's like, "Quaz, what's going on?" And they were like, "Will, the guys in Chicago were like, Will, is that you?" He gets on the mic. And he's like, hey, who is it? And they were like, it's Andy and Dave. And he was like, Andy, Dave, what's going on? And you could hear these dudes going, you think he might take a pass? Right. And I went, hey, man, get out of the booth. <laughs> oh. This is all I've got right now. Will, give us a clicker call I'm right now. I'm such yeah. a clicker call, insurance. Oh, oh, no. Man, they can't oh, God, they're going to revive it. They Fuck. can't afford it. Hang on a second. It. Yeah. Oh, shit. Is this going to wreck the audio, the beeping of the Brinks truck? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Back in it up. Hey, do you mind if I give it a go once? Um, yeah, let's hear yeah, it, Shani. Okay. okay. What's the line? Clicker call. Clicker call. Okay, ready? Yep. Clicker call. E insurance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just e insurance. But it's, oh, e insurance. <laughs> it's just e insurance. <laughs> But it's crazy Christ. because I remember, Will, you said into the microphone, do you guys need it truckier? And I was like, come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> truckier. Come on. Uh, you remember? Just <laughs> Kraz, one of my favorite. I have, we have so many memories. I mean, we, we, fuck, man. Holy shit, how much time have we spent over the years? And I was thinking about one time. I don't even know how long ago this was, but we were down at, do you remember this? We were at the Grey Dog, the one on Carmine Street in New York. Oh, yeah. And we we're having coffee. And it was like a, <laughs> I don't know, it was like a Wednesday morning or something. You know where I'm going with this. And we're sitting there and people are walking by and we're like, look at this guy. We had the comments for everybody. We're like, look at this freaking loser. Hey, nice fucking jeans. Hey, but like, <laughs> like just, to, just to each other, make each other laugh. Yeah. And then we're kind of quiet for a second and we just go, God, Bateman would love this. <laughs> <laughs> Just tossing shit. By the way, bombs. I think the biggest regret of leaving, definitely the biggest regret of leaving LA was leaving you guys. And Emily said that the thing she'll miss most is seeing the three of us in a corner just doing bits, just <laughs> completely isolated from the rest of the group, just doing, <laughs> serving up bits and entertaining to only us three. Just <laughs> pathetic and obnoxious. Oh, God. We'll be right back. Smartless is brought to you in part by. Visit Williamsburg. In Williamsburg, there's never too much of a good thing. Whether you're a foodie, a golfer, a history buff, a shopaholic, an outdoor enthusiast, a thrill seeker, you're going to find what you came for. From roller coasters to water parks, hiking and kayaking, Williamsburg is great for adventurers of all kinds. And with over a dozen four-star golf courses, it's become one of the East's premier golf destinations. Southern Comfort is just a taste of what their emerging food and beverage scene has to offer. From contemporary cuisine to the classics, fine dining to food on the go, and local craft breweries to stunning wineries. Williamsburg will satiate any appetite. Explore the grounds of America's first English settlement in Jamestown or shop along the quaint streets of historic Williamsburg and Yorktown. Dig into the forensics of our country's earliest settlers or experience a day in the life of one. This isn't just a place to learn about our shared history. It's a place to live it. Williamsburg is the type of destination that you can come back to again and again and have a completely different experience. Come to Williamsburg to live life at your pace. Start planning your trip today at visitwilliamsburg.com. Smartless is brought to you in part by Nerd Wallet. Smartless listeners, you like to listen to us, and that's very sweet of you, even though you understand we are not smart, talented, and one of us is super handsome. That's probably talking to you right now. Sure, but smart is not one of our strong suits. That's where our sponsor comes in, Nerd Wallet, where you can compare top financial products side by side and make smart financial decisions. Nerd Wallet has a whole team of nerds who help you make smart decisions on your next credit card, high yield savings account, and more. And these aren't people who just say they're smart, they're like actual smart. They've got CFPs, 
whatever that means, MBAs, whatever that means, years of experience. And they're using their expertise to offer side-by-side -side comparisons and objective ratings on top financial products for you. Are you spending more on gas and groceries lately? Of course you are. The world is. The world is terrible. Turn that negative into a positive and find a cash back card that rewards you for what you spend the most on. So for me, uh, you know, I would get cash back on like things that I love, like dining out, online shopping. I like dining out a lot because, you know, you get sick of the stuff that's uh, at your house or that's sent to your house or whatever, but it's all great. But sometimes, you know, you like to go out. And so I like to dine out like, I don't know, once a week, once every other week. It's kind of nice. So listeners, it's time to stop being smartless and time to get smart with the nerds at Nerd Wallet. Compare and find top cash back credit cards, savings account, and more at nerdwallet.com. Nerd Wallet, the smartest decision for all your financial decisions. Smartless is sponsored by BetterHelp. There are so many things, people call them life hacks, um, but often they're just things that make sense. Um, things that, um, for me, the, the things that make sense uh, that I do to help me feel good about myself are really simple. Uh, because I want to be my best self at all times because when I'm being my best self uh, and feeling, you know, my best self, then I feel better. And one of the things I do is self-care. Self-care is the most important thing to me. And uh, that might be exercising. That might be um, talking to people who are really positive, people who have a great perspective on life. Also, one of those things is um, talking to a therapist. Um, I've found it over the years to be really, really helpful um, because it allows me to be my best self. And when you're at your best, you can do great things. But sometimes life gets you bogged down and you can feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. So again, I feel like working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're just you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you um and i've had so many moments in my life where things weren't going the way i wanted them to or i, I just didn't feel like I, I was kind of jammed up going to a therapist every single time every time i did it i felt better after i'd done it and i was happy i did and sometimes it's not easy to to take that first step and and ask for help because you you're gonna have all those sort of doubts about, ah, do I need to do this? And why, well, do I really want to get into it? And every time I feel better on the flip side. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's, a, it's convenient, flexible, affordable, and it's entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched up with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash SmartList today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SmartList. And now back to the show. Johnny, I actually have a real question for you. Okay. Which is... I bet you don't. You know, which, <laughs> first of all, is... Uh, theater stories. Place to, theater, well, uh, believe me, if you have any... <laughs> I'm all ears. They're the hey, best stories. Hey, John, what's the craziest? <laughs> I can't even get it out. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> By the way, you know what? You guys make fun of me asking people for theater stories, and they always end up being hilarious They stories. always have. It's true. And, have. And, and, I, and I find from people who listen to the show that they fucking love them, too. So that's <laughs> And actually, John yeah. is a legitimate theater guy. Yeah. So, yeah, so, Go let's, uh, so if you let's, have uh, any... Awful, horrible stories. No, okay, great. So, but I really have a real. I got them written down right here, Sean. I'll get to them at the end. Yeah, only did one play. It was it was all a nightmare. So no, yeah, for real. But later. you wrote, did, yeah, did yeah. Oh, didn't tell, you study? Well, did you study playwriting at, at uh, Brown? Playwriting, yeah, not play performing. That was uh, I did a couple plays uh, at, at school, but no, I I, uh, I basically went to a theater school after I graduated. I was a mid year at Brown, so everybody graduated in May. I still had a semester, and that's what just for home births. You just help with home birth. <laughs> I'm thinking of something else for sure. I'm definitely thinking of something else. I knew there was something there. Um, oh, but are there any it. funny theater writing stories? I'd love to hear um, a theater writing story funny thing. No, that's just no, that, was, don't that exist. was all just torture. Well, because yeah. you're alone in a room writing. What's funny about that? There he is. He knows it. Yeah. Um, okay, so wait, but 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 I, just, I do. I have a question. So so a quiet place was that your first directing gig or no? I'm no. an idiot. 
What it was wasn't. No, Will was in my directorial debut. That's right. Which was what? Will was in it. It was a. It was an adaptation of a David Foster Wallace book called Brief Interviews with Hideous Men, and Will was oh, in wow. it. Probably starring in it. One, right? of, one of the one of the hideous. <laughs> yeah, one of the hideous. Men. Probably headlining, <laughs> name above title, um, and. Uh, <laughs> No, he was what? so nice to jump in. He came in and did this small part. It was amazing. It was amazing. So my 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 serious question is w dumb, which is what made you go from being an actor to wanting to be a director? Was there a person, a, a moment, or something where you on the set of the office and go, like, well, I kind of want to do this. Like this is, I'd rather. I'm more interested in how it's made than being in it. Um, I think there was something happening in the back of my head, but I'd never thought I'd have the confidence to direct. Um, and I was actually sitting at a burrito place. What's it called in L.A.? Uh, Chipotle. Sharky's. Sharky's. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sharky's. Sure. Sharky's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was sitting with Mr. Rain Wilson, and he saw that I was a bit perplexed, and he said, um, what's going on? I said, oh, I'm trying to get somebody to direct this movie I wrote called Brief Interviews with Hideous Men. He goes, why don't you do it? And my brain shut off, and I went, what are you talking about? And he was like, you should just do it. And so I did. And that was the, he encouraged me to uh, Isn't that wild? to direct it. And then in between, then the the people at the office heard that I was going to direct a film, so they said, "Why don't you direct a couple episodes to get your feet wet?" And the office was my entire film school. Everything I could ever dream right. of, I got in the purest form on that show. From I mean, the unbelievable writers' room that we had to these unbelievable editors. And you were a writer before even an actor, before even a director? Were you a writer first? Sort of. I was I, I, I was an English major in college, and uh, I, in my senior year, I took a course, which I, I got into the honors playwright program. And so What they, college? Brown University in oh, Providence, okay. Rhode Island. Okay, great. Got it. Yeah. I've heard okay. of it. Okay, Sean? Yep. Okay, Sean? I'm done. Okay. Uh, we can, it's, we can <laughs> wrap it up if you third want. third degree over here like he's a criminal. Is he on trial? What's going <laughs> on? Why is Kraz being, being persecuted right now? But, uh, I mean, by the way, Kraz... it just feels so good to be called Kraz again. Nobody has called me Kraz. In... Does nobody else call you Kraz? No? Nobody. God, no. all my Definitely phones not throughout the years, it's all Kraz on my thing. And so, like, I'm just like, uh, so when you, your name, anytime it comes up, I was. Well, you, but, know, you know how you come up on my phone. You know how you come yeah. up. No, Wait. keep it clean. Keep it clean. Carrie <laughs> Russell's. <laughs> the the what? popped eye in Mission Impossible Three. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> By the way, oh my God. I John, know exactly tell, what you're talking about. John, Is tell them true? why. Tell them why. Tell them why. It's one of my favorite movies. Will and I were obsessed with Mission Impossible. Of course. Born all that stuff. We all we would it. literally go sit front row. I mean, before any other humans were in the theater, we were there and we were prepared for all the movies. And Love we them. saw them, and when we saw Mission Impossible 3, and Carrie Russell has a bomb go off in her head, and her eye twisted, we hit each other and laughed so hard. I mean, just shaking each other. And I made it, I made it the picture so that when Will calls, it's this, it's just this. <laughs> and by the way, he'll do it to me sometimes. He'll just, like, if we'll be out some people talking, he'll turn to me and just go... Like do the I think and the other thing we Gunk. do to each other I think I mentioned this to JJ when he was on the show oh, no. uh, Abrams the 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 little brown dot that they never explained that they just put on the arm and when they like in the movie at some point the guy just walks up and just goes puts this brown dot and the person just slumps and we're like <laughs> what is the brown dot it's the deadly freckle it's a poison dart yeah, and also poison. Billy Crudup's character mouths mm. to Tom he goes yeah. And they have a conversation just mouthing. Right. But Will, do you remember we were at a party and JJ had just directed The Office? Yes. And he goes, I can't believe I remember this. And I'm so embarrassed to say this story. <laughs> JJ goes, hey, man, you want to meet Tom Cruise? And I went, what? And I was like 24, 25 or something. And he's like, come on over. And I go up and, and uh, Tom's coming down the stairs with like four bodyguards. And I don't know how, Will's watching me, and I don't know how I had the guts to do this. I went up and pretended to put a brown dot on his wrist. <laughs> oh, a poison dart on his wrist. And the four bodyguards moved on me and oh were going God. to kill me before I started mouthing to Tom. And he went, ah, 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 ah. And he started laughing and gave me like a hug and was like, this guy's okay. But for a second, they thought I was going to murder him. 
Cause That's he awesome. Because he geeked out. We used to go down to my old apartment on the west side <laughs> in New York, and we used to go watch movies downtown, and then we'd see, like, we saw all those movies down the, in those theaters, and we saw the, the Mission Impossible and all the Bourne movies. And then we, do you remember we'd like run up, or we'd be all gacked out on like M&Ms and popcorn or whatever, and we'd run <laughs> up the West Side Highway, just fucking like kids who just, were so stoked, running as if we're like this, like we'd run like Tom Cruise. By the way, in, I'm in my like mid to late 30s. Oh my know, God. You know, mid to late 20s. We used to yell, take the shot with holding our ears. I love that. To people on the street. <laughs> And then we found out Frank Marshall, our buddy, was one of the producers, oh and we God, made him yeah. tell us stories. We apprehended him, and then he ended up sending us rap gifts from the latest one, Bourne no. movie. He Remember? sent one. He sent a metal case oh, with, sorry. like, T-shirts and stuff to my house. And Will was so funny because I went, look, look, what do you got? And he goes, but I didn't get one. And I was like, no, I know. And he goes, so what do we do? <laughs> we had to split up. We had to split up the stuff. <laughs> Did you get invited to Conan's uh, Christmas party, John? <laughs> Ask him, did you get invited to Conan's invited Christmas party? Conan's I bet you a million no. bucks you did. No? No. How about Emily? Conan O'Brien? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't. And now I'm really sad. I'm really sad but about he knows, that. But he, he knows that they live in New York. And and uh, and by the way, Kraz used to work at Conan uh, when he was And he knows yeah, you live in L.A. <laughs> he was yeah. an intern there. I was his intern, yeah. For real? Yeah. It was his uh, script intern. Yeah, so yeah. I, my job, all the other interns, I got the writing script intern and the greatest part of the job, I couldn't believe it, was everybody gave him hair and makeup and all the producers are telling him all these notes of the guests and stuff. And then they all would clear out for 30 seconds as Max Weinberg would hit the drums. And I would have 30 seconds alone with Conan where he rehearsed the monologue just to me. Oh, and wow. I would cry laughing every single day. <laughs> and at the end of the summer, my, what was my favorite joke? He's like, yeah, you think these jokes are funny? And I said, yeah. And he goes... Really? I thought kids your age just went home, smoked weed, and listened to Pearl Jam. That's what he said. <laughs> and I was like, well, you're not far off. But then at the end, he brought me into his office. The last day, we were all leaving. He brought me into his office, gave me a Sam Adams, said, I know you're from Boston. Here's a Sam Adams. I just wanted to say thank you for uh, laughing every night. You have no Aww, idea what it means sweet. to have laughter be the last thing you see before you go on stage. And I cried. Oh, I mean, he's you the know greatest. Will. I burst into tears. Of I course you did. Conan is the I'm greatest. bursting into tears <laughs> hearing this. Uh, wait, that's And by the way, later, are... he was my first talk show. So the first talk show I ever did was Conan. Wow. So when I went back to do Conan, it was, again, I cried. But I was walking through the hallways, and all these people I used to work for were like, hey, this is great. We love the office. We're so proud of you. And I was like, <gasps> it was so intense. And then the guy pulling the curtain was the nicest guy ever. Uh, and he was like, we're all so proud of you. Go out there and have a great time. And I blacked out. Literally don't remember anything <laughs> until I was standing in the seat and Conan was already shaking my hand and he saw that I was having a panic attack. And he was like, don't worry, buddy. It's going to be great. And pushed me into the chair. And that, <laughs> that's how I... Wow. And cut to, cut to Kimmel uh, says repeatedly that you and Arnett are two of the best, if not the best, uh, talk show guests in the history of uh, oh, that's of show, very nice. showbiz, yeah, yeah, yep. no, it's. Just, I think it's just I'm I'm so happy to be humiliated for Kimmel anytime he wants. I think the <laughs> the lowest was I dressed as a shrimp for something, and I don't know what it was, but I was a shrimp. I dressed as a shrimp on his show. Yeah, I was in a skin tight Spider Man outfit once out in the Hollywood. Out on the uh, out in front of the man's Chinese. Oh, on, yeah. yeah, on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, I remember. He that. loved. Well, you guys were you guys. I mean, those are pretty heady days, especially back then when you guys when you moved up there and you and uh, Kimmel lived directly across the street directly from each other for a number yeah. of years. That the was uh, that was some fun times. Oh um, my god, the absolute best. Honestly, it's it's the thing we miss most about LA. It was it was yeah. the hardest decision because leaving leaving those guys, leaving you guys was it was really really hard. Yeah. Now, speaking of traveling around and stuff, it's got to be so tough that you and Emily being as as busy as two people could ever be. I mean, if you wanted to be working nonstop, you both could be, but you seem to both decide not to be working at the same time as much as you can avoid it yeah. so that you can be with the kids uh, and play mom or dad on the other person's set. You just kind of take turns. Is that right? Yeah, we do the best we can to take turns. It's been... Um it was going pretty well until COVID because that just pushed everything back. So we had this whole plan. She was going to do this, this amazing show that just came out, The English. It's one of the best things I've seen in a long, long time, if you haven't seen it. And she shot that in Spain. 
And I was doing Jack Ryan for two years straight because we shot two seasons back to back. And we Which is also hit. incredible. Just, I mean, that, yeah. that's got to oh, be such you. a difficult shoot. No I mean, kidding. Jesus, God, that's that a, a lot. Yeah, exhausting. It, it's, it was crazy. I mean, definitely shooting, I think we were the second production back uh, after COVID. I think it was Mission Impossible and yeah. us. Wow. And so, you know, you have 350 people showing up very courageously to work and saying, we're yeah. going to get back to work. And we were in nine countries in season three. Um, wow, during COVID wow. and all that, all that travel, and then season oh four, God. I think we were in five more countries, and so it was nuts. I mean, it's it's so much fun, and I have so, such a great time playing the role. But yeah, I mean, shooting that is a it's a whole different thing from being behind a desk for ten I years. Yeah, I mean, don't you miss that? A nice, predictable, air conditioned sitcom on a stage in yeah. Burbank. Oh yeah, yeah. just LED hey. lights, nothing changes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Granddad, fucking cool your hey, slippers man. for a second. Yeah. We're talking to people <laughs> who are out in the world. table over there. <laughs> Get you. Dressing room in the stage. Like you, got, parking like spot. you go to craft service. Unless they've served cardboard and almonds, you're not <laughs> going there. Hey, uh, Krazy, it was such a departure, though, for you truly, actually, kind of on what Jason was saying. Like, you, first of all, I got to say, one of the great things about spending, you know, the last couple of years about being at home a lot and whatever, one of the good things was catching up on a lot of things. And, and there were so many big pockets of the office that I didn't see at the time. And I talked about it with Carell when we had him on. I never fully appreciated it. And I watched it with my kids. Uh, mm. My older kids, Archie and Abel, just wanted to watch. That's all they wanted to watch. All of it. Uh. Every single episode. We watched all the way through. And I never, I feel like I never really got a chance to say back then when you were doing it. And we talked a lot at that time. You know, when you were doing the show, we spent so much time together. I never got a chance to say how fucking great you were on that show. How oh, funny, man. how in the zone you were, Ooh, how yeah. for sure, for sure. dialed <laughs> in you were, man. Honestly, it was yeah. it's really, oh, really, dude. really good. And it lives that forever. Is so nice. It's super Thank small and that. subtle too. Like yeah. and that was like what you hadn't done a ton of shit before that, right? No, I was a Yeah, waiter. I was gonna say, tell us how you got it. Yeah. I, I no uh, that guys that coming from you guys that means so much to me oh, really it, it really it does should. and I don't think I Sean really you, <laughs> really uh, agreed no, I just said it should come should mean a lot yeah. um, John tell me how you got the part for people that don't know like me like what was that like was it offered did you have to read for I it? love this oh yeah I definitely had to read for it I no, was um, oh really I thought you were saying my question no 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 no. No, I, I really was waiting tables. I hadn't done hardly anything. And uh, I had done a com couple commercials and I got a Jason, manager. you played a waiter once, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pay, paid a waiter. Paid a waiter once. Um, had you seen The British Office before you read for oh, it? Oh, yeah. I was yeah. a huge fan. Huge fan of that. And so I'm waiting tables. I'm watching the black DVD of The Office when it came to America. I remember it yeah. came in that black case. Yeah. It was just, it was amazing. Went to a, a record store and picked it up. No, so um, <laughs> I was uh, I was such a huge fan of that. And they called, I'll never forget, actually. They called and said, would you ever come in to read for this show? And I said, great. And I had actually been out in L.A. Um, testing for things that I didn't get. And I yeah. met Allison Jones, who... Mm -hmm. um, the great Allison Jones. Cast your show, Arrested. Yep. yep. And, and cast our show. And she said, it's so nice to meet you. I have something coming called The Office. Look out for it. And I said, okay, great. And they called me and they said, will you come in for the part of Dwight? And I remember, and like, I, yeah, I'm waiting tables. Yeah, I'm coming in. <laughs> yeah. No, I said no. I literally knew the show oh. so well. I said, and my manager think, uh, no, he thought I was insane. And I said, oh, I, wow. if I'm gonna do it, I want to put my best foot forward. And he said, y y you know, they're not very happy about this. They might not call again. And I said, I would just rather not ruin my chance by doing that role. And then, like six weeks later, they called and they said, can you come in for the role of Jim? And I said, sure. So I read for that, and then. I remember I tested in New York first at 30 Rock. I was terrified. I was literally shaking. And there were seven dudes that looked exactly like me, like all gyms just sitting on a bench. And each one after one went in and auditioned and probably had a great time, heard tons of laughter. Sure. Oh, the worst. And then it, came, it was just me. It was just me waiting. And the casting director came out and goes, so we're just going to take a quick lunch for an hour. So no. we'll come, we'll get to you when we're back. And I said, oh, Ooh, God. just one more. Ooh, one more, one more. No? Oh, okay. The waiting is so oh. nervous. So everybody leaves. Everybody came back with whatever the sweet greens was back then. And I watched everybody come <laughs> in and out, greens. like hundreds of people. And then this guy sat across from me and he said, are you nervous? And I said, uh, no, you either get these things or you don't. But what I'm really nervous for is whoever's making this show because it is such a perfect show and Americans have a way of just ruining every good show that comes out of the UK. And he goes, 
Well, I'm Greg Daniels. I'll sure as hell try oh, not to do that. And oh I went, my God. <laughs> and Greg no Daniels way. created the American office for people yeah. who don't know. Created yeah. the show. Oh yeah, he my was. God. Oh, God. The good shit. news is he claims that it was uh, one of the reasons I got the part because when I walked into the room, not out, they it's were. It's a real laughing. gym thing to say, by the way. That's what you I'm know, it's perfect. About. No, when I walked in, everyone was laughing and it wasn't laughing with you, it was laughing. At just pointing and laughing at how stupid wow. I was. <laughs> oh my god! And when I when I did it, Greg said, "You got the part because uh, honesty is the best policy." And I remember that. I remember that. And I was like, uh, "Sure, man. Oh, great." That did they give great. it to you in the room? No. No. I then went to L.A. and tested. I remember I flew with um, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Bob Odenkirk. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah. They were both that. testing for Michael Scott, and yeah. um, I remember oh, they split wow. up the New York kids and the L.A. kids. And so the New York kids went first and everybody left. And I was the last person in the New York group. And I didn't know what to do. And all these LA kids were going in and they were testing. And I'd been there probably five or six hours. And I finally just said, oh my God, they forgot to send me home. Oh, buddy. So I walked onto the set, the producers, they actually shot on the set of the show. They had already built a, a version of the set. Up in the valley there. Yeah, it, it was, well, we, we moved to Chandler Valley. We started in um, Culver City. There was like a Culver City thing. Wow. Yeah. But I went up and I and I said, uh, I, you, um, I think you forgot to send me home. I'm going to leave now. And from behind like a wall, you heard somebody go, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, give us 30 more minutes. And I said, okay. Uh, and in walked this girl. And I literally took one look at this girl and I said, ah, oh, that's the person who gets the part. If I could ever read with her, I'd have one shot at this, at this show. And it was Jenna Fisher. I knew she was going to get the role as soon wow. as she walked in the room. Wow. And then we... Uh, they said, we just want you to read with one other person. And I said, who? And they were like, Jenna Fisher. And I went, yes, because I thought <laughs> if she, if I at least get to read with her, I'll have a shot. That's and great. we read together. And I remember it was, as we walked out, I turned to her and I said to her, you're going to get this part. And she goes, oh my God, I thought you would get this part. And it's very sweet when we both got the part, as we both tell the story, it's true. The first thing I did was jump on my couch and scream. And then the second thing I said was, who's playing Pam? And they said, this girl named Jenna Fisher. And I said, yes. Wow. Isn't that I knew great? Do something wow. cool what a story. It, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And we will be right back. Smartless is brought to you in part by Viore Clothing, a new perspective on performance apparel. The product is incredibly versatile. It can be used for just about any activity like running, training, swimming, yoga, but also great for lounging or weekend errands too. Everything is designed to work out in, but doesn't look or feel like it. So freaking comfortable, you will want to wear it all the time. Seriously, it's more comfortable than whatever you're wearing right now. Like, I can see you. You don't think I can, but I can see it. Like Diane in Houston, that's a wonderful blouse. It, I'm, I'm not judging you. You would probably look better in a Viore shirt or something, and you could just keep driving to where I know you're not supposed to be going, but you're going. Ed, in New Jersey, you don't need to wear khakis every single day. Like just, you can put on Viore pants or Viore shorts. Nobody's gonna think differently of you. And in fact, they're gonna think better of you. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash smartless. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash smartless. Now, not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash smartless and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. This episode is brought to you in part by Visible. You don't need your mom to help you dial your phone or order takeout on your phone. You shouldn't need her to save on your wireless phone plan either. Visible offers their best rate all on one line, not four lines, not three, not even two, just a one line wireless plan with unlimited data for $30 a month, taxes and fees included, all powered by Verizon. It's smarter, it's simpler, and you get Visible's very best rate without a family plan. Switch today at Visible.com and get $20 off your first month when you use code SMARTLESS20. That's SMARTLESS20, a special offer for SMARTLESS listeners. Offer ends March 31st. New activation and code required. For data management prices, learn more at Visible.com. Additional terms apply. And now back to the show. Willie, you're, you have a similar experience with uh, 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 when you read for uh, Arrested. Right, you remember that when when you, when you left? Yeah, when, when well, we walked out, we walked. Well, I I actually it involves rain. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. Yeah, and I, I I flew out to L.A. as well, and I was super sick, and I 
I gave one of those auditions in New York when I read for it. I was like, oh, whatever. I just kind of did it. And then they called and they go like, you got to come out to L.A., but you got to, you have to sign your test deal before you go. And Prince Bauer kept calling me going, my manager. Peter. And I go, oh, Peter. Yeah. And get, oh. they kept going, I know, sweet Pete. And they go, <laughs> you got to. You got to sign your thing. You got to. He's like, they keep calling. And I go, hey man, if they're so excited about me calling, why don't you renegotiate? Because they obviously want me to do this. So I said that at first, and I was kind of joking. So I, but I fly out as me and Tony Hale, and Tony and uh, I go out and I read for. I was there all weekend, and we worked with the Russo brothers, who are now of you know Marvel fame, and then uh, and with Mitch Hurwitz, um, whom I just spoke to uh, about an hour ago, and they go. Um, you got to go in and read. It was me and Rain Wilson and, um, God, who was the other? Do you remember? French Stewart? No, he had already done it. But somebody, uh, somebody else, they have a bunch of like good guys and guys who had been working. Well, Rain was still, so you went in before Rain. So yeah, but a bunch of guys, yeah. Rain had already done Six Feet Under. Like he had a real career going and I was a, I was a fucking zero. And so we go in and I read and I come back out and then, the other guy came out and and uh, and then Mitch followed him out and he goes, "You got the part, you got the part." And I look over <laughs> and I see Rain still in the waiting room, right there, oh, still oh running aside. And I've oh, seen that guy. That's why. Oh that's why. You know, John, when you're talking about being and waiting and and then going to lunch or whatever, it's such oh. a already. It's such a vulnerable position when you go out and you're putting it it's all so out of the awful. line and you want it. And I see him there, and I've been in that position so many times. And I just went to Mitch. I went, "Oh no, no, please!" And, and I go, "Please, shh, 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 please, please, please." That guy, that guy's Rain Wilson is right. Hasn't over there, even please. read yet. Hasn't yeah. even read. They didn't even. You were like, "Sorry, did my manager get to you about the renegotiation? Is it more?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you talk to Peter Prince about it? Yeah. Did you? Everybody <laughs> followed out of the out of the room, walked right past Rain. They were done. But the good news is, what about a what a month later? He or reads no, for like the office. A, it was like a year later he reads right, for the office. Reads, and yeah. would have been unavailable. Just so you know, I I personally believe that Arrested is, I think, my favorite show. I think it's oh. my favorite show. Oh. That's so no, sweet. it's true. Stop, I remember, Sean. No, I remember. Uh, <laughs> no, Sean's never seen it? <laughs> yeah, I know. I yeah. know, Sean. You've yeah. seen two, Sean. You said I've you seen saw two. two. Two episodes, yeah. Yeah. Two episodes. It's fantastic. Um, best show I've ever seen. Those were great <laughs> ones. Yeah. No, but I remember when that show came on, uh, it was such a big deal because The Office had come out, the British one, and that level of comedy was untouched. And then you guys came out with this whole other lane that was so good. And I just remember thinking, if I could be on a show that good, that has the confidence to, my favorite thing was how you guys brought jokes back at the end of an episode that you had barely touched on at the beginning. Well, you guys were that good, if not better, and people were actually watching your show. <laughs> it, stayed, yeah. it stayed on for <laughs> yeah. what, you 10 years? Were, you guys were a big hit. And we, I remember, you know what's <laughs> weird? I just mentioned Janine Garofalo. She was, she had sent, um, my, she had sent Amy these, she had these tapes of The Office that she brought her before, like right around the time they were about to start airing them on BBC America when Jason and I started watching. And I'd seen these tapes and I was like, Holy fuck. We'd already done the pilot, but I was talking to Jeff. I was like, this show is fucking, and it seemed like one. And then we started watching all these episodes and we were obsessed we were with studying it. studying it. And then it was like, I remember, I, I remember them saying at the time, actually, we thought that we were going to maybe get canceled Arrested Development uh, the entire time we were on the air. Mm -hmm. And like yeah, too. week to week. Too. And in The first two years. And we had been on the air for six months or something and they were starting to put together the office and Prince, Peter Prince Bado, my manager, said, hey, Allison Jones wants to know if, if Arrested falls apart, would you come in, would you ever consider going wow. in for the office? I don't know if I Jim, ever told you that. For Jim. For the part of Jim and Pam. <laughs> oh my god! Took, they were gonna make them into one oh character. Oh my god! Yeah, that just to save a little money, just a, they're, they're just a wig jam. away. And they're gonna call them Jam. Yeah, oh they're gonna god. call them Jam. God, that makes well, sense. Well, there goes my spinoff. There was a lot. Just, that's and a I lot. said, yeah. Anyway, we made that pilot. Jam. Wow. That was, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we made that's that pilot. That's why they won't. That's why they won't do a reunion because my idea was Jam, reunion. and they had already done it. Hey, John, I have another. We'll be right back. Yeah, I have another question coming right back from the Rust Development Rewatch podcast. Get us back on track. I want to know, um, do you of, of all the stuff that you're doing, because you are so now prolific as a director and everybody uh, is uh, celebrating you in that way, and rightfully so, because you, you just oh, are so nice. Thank you, incredible. Um, do you have a goal of a, of a film or a type of film that you really want to conquer that you haven't conquered yet, um, either like a genre or a specific story? Um, anything Meanwhile, in Sean Taylor right now is going, please say musical, please say musical, 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 uh, you know, the truth is, I, I, like I said, I never 
knew that I would have the opportunity to be a director. So right. I, I said, I'm just, I'm just listen to the question now that you are. <laughs> okay. Copy. Yeah. Um, Fuck sorry. me. Sorry. Let me just redo that. Sorry. <laughs> Let me throw this tissue away. Uh, no more tears. No more tears. I think um, you should re you should remake the producers and uh, put Sean in there as uh, Gene Wilder, and oh, I'll, play, uh, I'll play I'll uh, play uh, Zero Mistel. Yeah, there you go. Be yeah, on the show. By the way, Sean, I can't wait to see uh, Goodnight Oscar. Can't wait. Oh, April, that's right? so sweet. Thank you. I can't. April. Wait. Yeah. Look, he knows it's April. Look at this. Yeah. We'll oh, all go together at the Barbarasco Theater. What is it? The Barbarasco. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Barbara, the Vinny Barbarino. <laughs> the Vinny Barbarino the Theater. Theater. Has, has any show received more consistent press <laughs> <laughs> on a lean-in than this fucking than Good this Night This thing Oscar? better open. I, Let me tell you it something. It better be fucking good now. You shit the bed during <laughs> previews. It's, it's um, No, so so no specific like, oh my God, I, I, have got, I have this in my back pocket. I don't care if it takes 20 years to make. I have this passionate story I want to tell. Anything no, like the way that? the way it goes for me is I, I just, I fall in love with something, an idea that, uh, and I just do exactly that. So this idea that I had for Imaginary Friends, I never thought I would do sort of a, you know, a comparable movie would be like E.T. or something like that. Yeah, it's sort yeah. of a, it's sort of a, and I never thought I'd do something like that. Certainly never thought I'd do genre at all. Didn't think I, I could never watch horror movies ever. I was so scared to watch horror movies. And so, yeah. When I directed Wait, a horror John, movie, that John, was remember, terrifying. Remember when we went to see I Am Legend? You mean? Oh Amy. my God. <laughs> and the dark night came on. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Poor John. We just kept doing it over and over and over. <laughs> 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 because that guy was the star of the show. That guy. No, but Will, do you remember we sat in this IMAX? And all of a sudden, Will and I, again, were in this tear of just, you know, big action movies. You guys just burning afternoons? Is that what it was? <laughs> I just, mean, just things. trying to get to dinner somehow? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, but Will, do you remember they played the first 10 minutes of The Dark Knight? I was about to say that. And we went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. We've heard about this where they, like, switch a movie to test the audience. We're a test audience. <laughs> and then it stopped after 10 minutes. Yes. And it went, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. That was crazy. fucking crazy. What do you mean remember they stopped that? the movie after ten minutes? They stopped. The they actual literally showed the opening of the Dark Knight, the whole thing as like a as like a special thing tied to uh, I Am Legend. That's weird. But it didn't even say like this preview. It just started. Nothing. Oh, that's it just wow. started. So weird. We were like, oh my god, we're in a oh, test. We're, like, we're in a test. At first, we didn't even know it was Dark Knight because you don't know it, and we're like, what the fuck is going on? And then we're like, holy oh, shit, they're going to show the fucking movie. And then the anyway. Joker came on screen, and we were like, oh, my God. It was and wild. Then, <laughs> with, with, with. And we would do that for fucking months to each other out of the blue. Just, That's, I like that. I movie. remember Amy hating it, Will. Do you remember? She'd go, guys, stop. Oh, she's stop. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> she hated it so much. You starting to sniff out any talent there with the with the eight and the six year olds? They, they want to act or direct or sing or anything like that, like I mom think and dad. They, they went through phases of it, but I don't think I don't think either of them right now are wanting to do it. Would you let them if they said if they said they want? I don't to think like... they know that I'm an actor, so they're they think I'm an accountant. <laughs> are they? Do you think they're going to be tall? Oh yeah, Hazel's very tall. Violet's she? not so tall, but yeah, Hazel's very tall. Just all you know, legs. John. John's family. His parents are both really tall. His brothers are. Really, I'm the shortest. He's the shortest. Yeah. Of his oh, family. Wow. He's six four. Everybody is huge. If if you ever want to like, anytime I spend time around John's family, I'm always like, "Fuck, man, I feel short," and I usually feel tall, especially around you two idiots. I yeah. feel like a you know, really a person of substance. And yeah. then because tall people are better, and wow. so then, um, and I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback on that, yeah. but but then, um, but John, as it turns out, was at the time for many years. John, what's the stat about your birth weight? Oh, I was the biggest baby in Boston. I think for. I was 11 pounds, 12 ounces. <laughs> Good God, that's three children. Yeah, it was three children. And you were, and you were the last one. Yeah, I was the last one. I'll never forget the story. Will loves the story. My mom went to a doctor's appointment and was with a doctor, and a nurse walked by, a, a gentleman uh, walked by, and literally looked like he was in a horror movie. And he <laughs> said to my mom, he goes, I was there. And she goes, excuse me? <laughs> and he goes... I was there when you gave birth to that baby. And my mom goes, well, I have, I have three kids. And he went, no, the big one. <laughs> oh. But this guy was scarred for life. Yeah. And then he went, and then he went, <laughs> 
Uh, That's fucking good. I love that story. I yeah. can't get That's over it. That's really crazy. funny. Yeah, I, I probably wasn't the biggest baby in Boston. I was bit, probably the biggest baby at that hospital for a while, but yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. I was that there. That baby. No, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> he was like sliding in, shuffling like a zombie. <laughs> um, Jesus. Krazy, fuck, it's so great to see you, dude. Thank oh, you yeah. for coming and doing this, this man. This was so awesome. Thank you, Miss guys. you, this man. Really Super you so fun. Much. When's the in-person stuff again? How long? So you're there for another eight weeks. Then you're going to be in New York. And then I'll be in New York uh, indefinitely. It'll you know what that'll time there. out to? It'll time out to carpooling to Sean Hayes' Broadway show playing yeah. at which the theater? Belasco. The Belasco. The Belasco. By the way, if you guys come for opening night, let's all go together. Let's all go together. Let's all go. Done. 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 Let's all go together. I, can't wait. I would love that. I can't, that'll be really fun. And honestly, Sean, congratulations. That's amazing. Thanks, Thanks. All Thanks. the great reviews about, and everything. It's been about Congrats. 15 years in the making. Wow. The, re the yeah. reviews are off the chart. And this is going to take everybody. This is going to be, it's going to be a smash hit. Obviously. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, okay, but anyway, Johnny, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. Please, uh, let's get together when you come back. Yeah. I would love it. And thank you, guys. This was wonderful to hang out again. It's been it's been too long. Miss you guys. John, love you, buddy. Miss you, too. Love you, man. Have love fun too, down man. under. Hey. All right, guys. Thanks. Gasoline. Bye, Johnny. Aluminium. <laughs> oh, oh nice. nice. He knows how to slam it. He knew. He couldn't wait he to knew. slam He's it. He's a listener. He couldn't wait to slam it. That's such a... He's a true listener. I mean, he is a listener, as you know. He's... Yeah, texted wow. us. And Jason, he's texted you too how much he he likes listening to the show. And I tried to put it together for a while. I obviously knew he was coming on for a while and we were just trying to time it out for a couple months. That was a good surprise. Wait, yeah. he was really supposed to go on the day of or after Emily? I, I'm pretty sure it was the day after or two days after. Wow, that would have been yeah. wild. And that's why you guys... You, and you guys were after um, we had Emily on the show after the record, and when she left the the, the show, we were you had, we were talking about it. And you guys, we got to get John on. Get, and I was like, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ! I know. I, I kept going. No, I know. <laughs> and you knew it. You knew and it the I whole knew time. It then. Um, <sighs> what a great guy! It really uh, sucks he doesn't live in L.A. anymore. What I know it does. The problem. Suck. God it changed damn it. everything. Well, why don't we just move to New York? I know he lives in New York, right? though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um. But uh, anyway, we've talked about, the three of us, about and fantasize about all of us just living there. Let's live in New York. Time again. I know I used to live there for over 20 years. I and, know, I know. Do you miss think, it, Will? I do. I, you know, I didn't, when I first sold uh, my apartment, was like five, God, coming up on six years ago. And I was like, no, I'm just like so LA. And now I really, I really miss it. I do. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to, what about uh, even just nice. for friendships? Like it'd be like cause guys are terrible about maintaining friendships, right? Well, I, I will speak for myself. I'm I, I just feel like well, it'll just we'll just pick it up right where we left off when we and and for the most part that's true. But yeah. uh, I mean, maybe in our last third half quarter of our lives, we'll just throw throw it all away and just do friendships. No, no career. We'll do that with the oh, retirement. for sure. Yeah, but, but but that's one of the great things about when you are in New York. And, you know, obviously, Kras and I talked so much back then in the day. We would, yeah, we would burn afternoons and go to see movies and stuff. But when you're in New York, you kind of do that more than we do in L.A. We're, right. we're so sequestered walk everywhere. in Los Angeles. And the three of us, obviously, because the weekends we spend time together and whatever. And, Jason, we play golf. Like, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't see each other. Right. Um, you know, it's funny. It reminds me of, you know, um, you guys know Mike O'Malley. and um, yeah. love him. You were friends with him and my old friend. Uh, and I remember him once saying, like, when you – people getting mad, like, that you don't hang out anymore. And he used to always say, yeah, life happens. And then when you see each other, you yeah. pick back up. And you That's don't right. go, like, hey, why don't we hang out? You don't get into that shit. You just go, yeah. hey, I love you. And, like, here we go. Yes. And you pick it you back up. Yeah. But, 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 like, but, but here's the thing. Like a marriage, friendships are also work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. you have to put the effort in in order to receive it back. So yeah. I think um, if you think of it that way, that's how I think of it. Yeah. You think of our friendship as a lot of work? A lot <laughs> Too of, much. Good to know. <laughs> good to know. I feel like you guys are staring at my box here. Um, <laughs> and the zoo. Well, we were when you were uh, flossing your teeth. Hi. Hi, girl. Uh, so, um, but Johnny, we love him. We do love him. And it was great. And I'm, uh, I'm so happy that we've now had... I was thinking also, <clears throat> two of our friends... Um, but certainly two guys that I, I used to spend, you know, a lot of time with and, and, and still do in various, you know, cause we were like, we were just saying life kind of happens. Um, but two guys who at different times in my life, I've considered to be 
it, it almost sounds patronizing to say little brothers. It's just because they're younger than me. Um, mm -hmm. Kraz and Bradley have gone on to become these great directors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and so is this other guy we're looking at, Jason Bateman. Mm. And so is yeah. Jason, but yeah. But also younger than you. <laughs> Please. Looking, sorry, let me finish. Oh, that's true. Go ahead. I guess that's fair. <laughs> that's because that's you have all that dirty hair. You know, that was great to talk to John. Uh, very, very difficult for the uh, interview to be over because, uh, you know, at the end of it, you got to say bye, you know? Yeah. Bye. Bye. So let's just bye. let's just make it real this time, you know. God, that was a very real bye. It's hard to say bye to John. Bye. I'm trying to make I'm trying to make it real and also bye. So bye. bye. Give your best crying bye right now. Soft, soft bye. Soft cry bye. Cry bye. 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 Will or Sean, what's your best cry bye? That was it. Oh, Will. Bye. Here's mine. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it had a little bit of vomit in it, too. What? <laughs> so, uh, I guess they'll let us know. They'll, they'll, they'll let us know which one they want to go with. Um, my availability is... Uh, thank you. You thank swallowed you. that by. <laughs> Fuck me. What? That was a good one. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry, and Rob Armjarf. Smartless. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.